Hey guys. Hey everybody, good to see you today. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And we're setting out in the middle of a field. And then behind this, you can see grain bins. This is this is the grain bins that, I mean, I grew up around. You know what, uh, picture me walking barefooted on rocky roads when I was a little girl. I don't think anybody's on. Oh, there, oh, they yeah, come. there you okay, are. There you are. I just have to tell you, I have to tell you that, um, well, what happened was we got here and, you know, we always use Rick's phone to film with. And so for, for some, some reason, reason. He's, it, he's not able to connect today, but I was. So guess what? All my notes are on my phone that I'm, that I'm looking at right now. So, so you can totally look inside by heart. the phone and read. Yeah, but anyway, the name of our devotion today is called Stored Up. Everybody say stored up. Stored up. So then I. So she's better. She better have it all stored up. In her. <laughs> yes. Pray that I have it stored up. And with the sun is shining right in my eyes. And so yes. So. I'm not winking at you. Just <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna. Uh, we just want to just share from our heart today, and you know, today I was. No, you can't do that. I think that's rude when you're. Oh, it is. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't want to be rude. <laughs> It won't okay. last. I mean, we'll just, y'all hang with us, okay? But anyway, so uh, today when I, was, when I was praying, I heard the word stored up, and I thought of these grain bins, and you know how we like to go on site. Well, um, you know, why do they store grain in the grain bins? It's not rocket science, right? Yeah, they, they do it to let the price go up. They try and, they try and I don't know if that's what you're hoping for, but that, no. the reason they put grain in those bins is so that they can have grain later and a lot of times the farmers will take that grain and hold it until the prices uh but rise. it's but it's a safe place isn't it it's a they safe... gotta have some place to put it but you know? but it's a safe place to put it so it doesn't rot you know i just i took the liberty today and i, I went to a grain bin and got some stuff that was on the ground yeah. So that's what's in there. That's what's in those grain bins right now. Well, that's not very appetizing. No, <laughs> I wouldn't want to eat this right now. But anyway, I thought about the storing up and you know, um, how, how many of you, you understand obviously the process of storing up. You store up food, well, you know, you try to make sure your cabinets are filled or right, your, your the pantry. Proverbs talks about go to the ant thou sluggard and consider her waste. The ant is always busy storing up for winter so that he makes sure that he has something when hard times hit. You know, I'll never forget, just a few yards from these grain bins, it was where my grandmother used to live. We, my dad and I were sitting outside. You know how back in the day, you would just sit out and communicate, porch. sit on the porch, you know, and people would gather around and, and you would have, I mean, that was your entertainment. And so I remember sitting beside my dad and I just happened to notice, because I saw this little piece of, it was a bread or a cracker, it was about that big, and I noticed it was moving on the ground and I, I started looking a little closer and it was one single ant that was trying to lift up this little piece of cracker. And you know, it was struggling. So you know what, it dropped it and then it, it uh, walked around it, started, tried to lift up the other side and it fell. And you would think, I mean, the ant just gave up. And, and so he, he did, he left the piece of cracker there. But he hadn't given up. No, he hadn't given up. So then just jokingly, I told my dad, I said, he's probably getting ready to go get his, or he probably went to get his friends to help him. And I was just kidding. And all of a sudden I saw an army of ants, single file, and they got to that little piece of uh, cracker and it was so cool. They got on every piece of it and they carried it, they carried that cracker to their storage, to their storehouse, you know? And so, you know, they worked together to do that. Right. So, you know, I just thought about how that, you know, God has, he has something stored up for us. And, you know, um, you know think about this, when God has stored up for us, you know, before those grain bins got full, somebody had to go gather what had been planted. And so God has sent us his word, but we have to gather it. We've got to get into it to be able to glean from it. And then we're able to store it in our hearts. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And when we grab hold of that, we can find that in a day of trouble. There's a time when David has, you know, his city has been burned with fire. All of his families are gone. His own men spoke of stoning him. But the Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. And that was because of what he had stored up right, there. He right. remembered the word of the Lord concerning him. And he wasn't going to let the devil rob that's him right. of what God had promised him. And that's what he also said. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So he's, he's storing up that word. But you know what? I thought about, 
you know, how do we, how do we get what God has promised us? And, you know, in Deuteronomy 28 and 8, which is in my notes there. So, you know, <laughs> I may not have this one memorized, but, you know, how he said that, that he would, that he would uh, command his, his blessing at, what does it say? I don't know. You didn't show me your notes. <laughs> I should have showed him my notes. But upon the, our storehouses. And so that he, he would feel them. And, but there's something that in order to, in, in order to uh, draw from that, you know, I thought that was interesting because, you know, if we just store it up, if we just, you know, we just hold it there and we don't share then, and we don't give from it, eventually that's just, I mean, that, that's going to not last. It'll is rot. It, it, you know that in those grain bins that you know moisture gets to it that's not going to last but you know Joseph stored up in Egypt for a time of famine and he was able to have something for the people well actually the people were able to have something because Joseph had been wise enough to store up we talked earlier Debbie and I were talking and I said you know think about the ten wise or the ten virgins that there were five wise and five foolish five of those virgins went and they stored up oil because they knew that they would need it and they didn't want to run out. Five of them just tried to make the journey on what they had and when the bridegroom came they had run out of oil and so they didn't have any because they hadn't stored any up. We need to get, not only do we need our daily bread, yes. but we need to get it pressed down, shaken together, running over that God wants to pour into us. But, you know, as you say that, you know, how we get more, right? How that he keeps, he keeps filling us up, but there's something where we have to do that we must do. And that's to, like you said, in, and that's uh, Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given to you. Press down, shaken together, running over shall men given to your bosom, which means our lap, and it's running over and it's you know that's something i think is pretty awesome how that as we begin to give god just keeps filling up that storehouse and there's so much that we have not we have not tapped into that right. he's got laid up for us and but we've got to begin to share then we start getting to we, we get to experience that harvest as we can we give the, you know in the 24th chapter of matthew jesus speaks and he makes a state i've been leaning over on her edge. the she, ground's I, kind of I'm unlevel actually, right now i'm actually trying to hide the sun but he he talks about he said uh that blessed is that servant whom his lord or whom it, when his lord cometh finds so doing he's talking about he said that he had meat for him in due season that those that he'd given ruler he made to be ruler over his house or he'd given authority to and that word meat there by implication means wages and the word season is talking about a set time so what god what jesus was telling us is that he has a set time that he's going to release into our hand something that he's promised yes. us there's now look it's not just been setting idly but it's accruing like with interest does in a bank and so it's time Stored for up. us we're in that season where it's time for us to be drawing from what he promised That's right and being able to move forward with boldness and confidence proclaiming that he's alive he's well and he's coming and so we don't want to just have enough for us yes we want to make sure that we're storing up that we have not just oil in our own lamps but we're sharing it everywhere we go because there's only one thing better than going to heaven and you know what that is it's taking someone with you Absolutely. but you talked about the pilgrims today right well does that make you know, sense now does it make sense now because <laughs> we're going a different we're, direction okay so, so she opened it i'll finish this up you know the pilgrim story that we hear is wonderful but that's not that's not all the facts what happened is when the pilgrims traveled over they didn't land in plymouth rock to begin with as a matter of fact they, they were supposed to land 200 miles south but the waters were too dangerous the winds were too contrary to be able to make it so they went down cape cod and the scurvy had hit the boat people were sick they were weak too had already died and they they were in the point of they were hungry they were getting to the point of starvation and they got out and they explored and they searched and they found a cache of corn there were four bushels in one cache and they traveled on and found 10 bushel in another somebody had stored it up somebody had made preparation but the pilgrims had not 
So they were taking the preparation that someone else had made to keep from dying. Now, and a lot of people aren't aware of this, but there was a skirmish because the Indians saw them taking from their cash, and all of a sudden arrows started flying through the air, and those men ran to a makeshift wall that they built, kind of like a shelter that they had built, and you know they were shooting at each other, thankfully, and no one died, and they, but they learned a valuable lesson. They had looked, they had good intentions. They planned on leaving a note telling them we're going to pay you back which meant absolutely nothing to the Indians but it it shows you the importance of storing up because we want to make sure that we can provide for our families now I'm speaking of in a spiritual sense now right because if, if we begin to get weak in the faith and we begin to falter and fail then how are we going to be able to strengthen our families so we need to ask God to pull yes. the Spirit out yes. to us. Store that up every day by meeting with Him every morning and ask Him and into your heart. Get into His Word and fill yourself up so you can share that with so you others. you pour it out. That's right. And, you know, I was just thinking, uh, I just want to speak a word to you today. Leviticus 26, 9 and 10. And so to take heart and understand that, you know, it's stored up for you. But there's something we have to give, and you know you can't give what you don't have. Right. So if you're if you're storing up and you're you're getting what you need, then you can pour it out, and you can you can be a blessing to others, like like Joseph was to his his brothers. Right. But Leviticus 26 9 and 10 says, "I will look favorably upon you. I will multiply you and make you fruitful." And he says, and you'll eat of the old harvest, but you will clear out the old because of the new. So what this means when he says, I will look favorably upon you. I believe God's favor is upon your life and it's getting ready to be multiplied. When he says multiply you, that's speaking financial. He's going to give you provision for your vision, meet your every need. And then he says, I'll make you fruitful. You know what fruitfulness is? How many of you want God to use your life? You want to be fruitful. You know, I do. I want God to, to use me. You know, to uh, you know, to win the loss, to you know, to to make a difference in somebody else's life, to bring them up to their highest and best, to to be that catalyst to bring them up right. for God. But He says, and you'll eat of the old harvest, but you'll clear out the old from, uh, because of the new. You know what eat there means? It means to eat from it, like you're doing. It means to give to eat. So while you're just being faithful, and you're just you know, you're doing what you know to do for God then what happens, you're eating it, and then it means to give to eat. You're sharing of that harvest. Then what happens, he said, you'll clear out the old because of the new. And so the old, it, when he says clear out, he, it means to press it down to make room for the new that's coming. Isn't that great? I love that. He's saying just press it down and make room for the new that's coming. He's got a storehouse waiting for us to draw from it. But you know what else? That you know, when you, when you uh, activate it is giving. You know what happens when we give thanks to God? You know, you're talking about the pilgrims. That was a time they set aside, you know, Thanksgiving to, you know, to to be thankful for what all God has yeah, done for the you. Following year. The following year. Okay, what happened then? Well, they survived. They were nearly all. Of them, more than half of them died out of 102 that made the journey. 44 survived the next year. When they had the opportunity to get on the ship and go back, they didn't. They said, I haven't come this far to turn around and go back. Wow, that's good. So think about it. We haven't come this far. The Bible says that Isaac sowed in a time of famine, and he reaped a hundredfold. Yes. He wasn't looking at the circumstance around him to determine what he ought to do. He was looking at God, that's right. and he was believing the Word of God concerning him. It's the same thing we've got to do now. We believe the Word of God concerning us. Don't get distracted by all the circumstances right. around you. It's time to get our focus on God, plant the seed that he's given us. The Bible said that he gives seed to the sower. He gives us seed so we can sow it. When we sow that seed, that's when we end up with a harvest yes. that we can store up. And we're able to feed not just ourselves, right. but we're able to feed our family right. with it. So when we give thanks to God... That's something we can give him. And what happens? Then he gives us more to be thankful for. You know, we, we can just, how can we, you know, ask him for more if we haven't thanked him for what he's already given us? And so let this be that time. I know this is the season of Thanksgiving, but it should be every day of our life. Give thanks in all things. But look, he's got it stored up. And to draw from it, we begin to give from what he has given. Amen. So let's pray together. Thank Father, you, we Lord. thank you, God, for your provision. 
Lord, for your promise to us, yes, God, that Jesus. you never leave us, you never Story. forsake us. But Father, you're with us to the very end. You're providing for us. I pray that you yes. give us the wisdom, Father, to store up God, in, in your spirit, your blessings, your word in our heart, so we can share that with others, God. We want to make sure that we are full in a time of famine. Yes. We want to make sure yes. that our families are provided to glean from you, Father, Lord, to draw from you, God, and to continually seek you with all of our hearts. Yes. We thank you because we know you're faithful and you always bring the harvest home. In Amen. Jesus' name. You know, also Amen. his word in Philippians 4 and 19. Is that right? Or 3 and 19? I think it's 3 <laughs> That's what happens anyway. when you don't have your <laughs> No, notes. it's 3 and 19. No, I was just thinking of this when you were praying. I was praying too, but I was thinking too. But, uh, but when he said, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. So don't be afraid. He's got a storehouse laid up for you. So just continue, store up and give out. Store up, give out. Look, we love you guys today. Have and a great we'll, day. we'll we love see you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.